Hello everyone, my name is Jack Valdanani and I'm a PhD student in physics at the University of Padua in Italy. And firstly, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. And today I'll be talking about the implementation of a new primitive variable recovery scheme in our JRMHD code splits. This work has been done along with my supervisor, Dr. Ricardo Cialfi, and our collaborators, Dr. Wolfgang Castam, Professor Bruno Giacomazzo, Dr. Federico Cipolletta, and Lorenzo Nocci. So general relativistic magnetohydrodynamic simulations provide the essential framework in order to investigate various astrophysical mechanisms involved in compact binary mergers, relativistic jets, core collapse supernovae, accretion disk systems, and other such events. And in order to perform such simulations, recently we introduced a new GRMSD code called SPLIT, which also now includes a neutrino leakage scheme. Earlier today, you heard in detail about SPLITs by my colleague Federico Cipolletta, so I will not go into detail on this. But the uh, JRMHD codes like spritz evolved the so-called conserved variables. And currently there exists no analytical solution or method in JRMHD in order to convert back these conserved variables to the fundamental primitive ones. Hence, one needs to employ root finding algorithms in, uh, in order to ret retrieve uh, these primitive variables. Such recovery procedures, also known as quantum prim or C2P schemes, are a crucial aspect at the core of any GRMHD code. The C2P can be uh, an error-prone part of evolutionary codes, and uh, existing state-of-the-art C2P schemes in GRMHD could all fail in certain regimes, for example, in highly magnetized low-density regions. Uh, Siegel et al. 2018 give a good overview of different C2P schemes. And uh, most of these schemes uh, fall into two categories based either on neutron wraps and root, uh, root finding techniques or on root bracketing methods. Recently, we introduced a new C2P scheme, which we refer to as a reprimand C2P scheme, uh, which is based on a root bracketing method. And it is proven to always converge to a unique solution. The scheme also comes with fine grained error policies and is implemented uh, in a completely EOS agnostic way. It is publicly available on Zenodo and on GitHub in the form of a C++ library uh, called Reprimand, which also includes an US framework. So on Friday, uh, Wolfgang Kastan will talk in detail on this Reprimand library. So do uh, tune into his talk. Um, so the next natural step was to implement this uh, C2B scheme and spritz, which we did by integrating first the Reprimand library into the Einstein toolkit framework. And then we added a wrapper function in spritz in order to call the C2P from the reprimand library. And uh, after its implementation, we performed a number of demanding uh, 3D tests uh, using spritz, uh, which I list here. So for the first test, we considered a magnetized TOV uh, star, and we endowed it uh, with an internal poloidal field, as you can see on the left panel here. Uh, this is on the meridional plane. We evolve this configuration for about 10 milliseconds and we see that the magnetic fields are rather well sustained. Here uh, on this slide you have on top, uh, top left uh, the evolution of a maximum rest mass density and on the bottom you have bottom panel as the maximum uh, magnetic field strength evolution for the same TOB configurations using different uh, resolutions and using the idle gas for uh, as, as an evolution EOS. Uh, in, for a comparative study, we performed the same set of simulations with another C2P scheme of Noble et al, which is very much used by the community, and we find exactly matching curves. For the next test, we used the same TOV configuration, but endowed it with rather, uh, we painted, uh, sorry, we, we painted it with a dipolar magnetic field using um, the vector potential prescription of Moesta et al 2020. And here on top right, you, and for the, we set the initial uh, magnetic field strength to about 6.6 .6 times to the power 15 Gauss. And uh, we assume that mass break flow density of about 6.3 times to 10 to the power five grams per centimeter cube. So here on top right, you see the initial and final time configuration for the magnetic field strength along with A5 contours for the simulation performed with the reprimand uh, C2P. And in general, we, fi we find reprimand C2P to be more robust in comparison with the noble uh, C2P in terms of handling highly magnetized low density regions. For the th our third test consists of a uniformly rotating neutron star. So we evolved this configuration for the star for about 10 milliseconds. And only then we paint this dipolar field as similarly as done in the previous tests. And 
we then evolve this configuration for another 10 milliseconds. So uh, right after imposing this field, the first thing we notice is this uh, distortion uh, that the field gets, starts to get distorted due to the turbulent motion of the differentially rotating uh, low density materials surrounding the neutron star bulk. And differential rotation leads to magnetic winding and development of a toroidal component. And on the right in this 3D plot, you see um, this twisting of magnetic field lines close to the neutron star, while uh, far away, the dipolar uh, structure remains rather unaffected. So this test shows that the uh, reprimand C2P scheme can handle highly magnetized load density regimes rather well. For the next test, we assume uh, we consider um, differentially rotating dynamically unstable neutron star that eventually collapses to a curved black hole. And this system is based on the A2 model of Giacomazzo et al. 2011. And here too, we uh, we paint this uh, dipolar field into this initial into our initial neutron star configuration. And uh, soon after the black hole formation, the matter starts to get rapidly, uh, gets rapidly accreted onto the black hole and the magnetic field also gets drag dragged along uh, by this infalling material. Uh, this critical test also shows that the reprimand seam can handle magnetized neutron star collapse to a black hole uh, rather well, which is a typical scenario encountered in DNS monitors. For our final test, we consider uh, um, um, uh, magnetized accretion disk around, around the curved black hole. And we evolve this configuration for about 30 milliseconds. And here on the right, you see the mass accretion rate and the evolution of total magnetic energy till about 30 milliseconds. And in this slide, you see the initial and final type snapshots of rest mass density and of magnetic field strength. Uh, one thing we noticed is uh, development uh, of a toroidal field thanks to um, the uh, man, uh, winding, uh, of magnetic winding, as well as potential development of magnetic, magnetic rotational instability, which uh, leads to a steady growth in the magnetic energy. Uh, bottom line here is too that the, uh, the Reprimand uh, C2P scheme works well in, in the regimes that, in, that in, uh, encountered uh, during the uh, highly magnetized uh, accretion flow onto, onto black holes. To quickly summarize, uh, the new C2P scheme by Castown et al. Proof, has proven to be a robust, accurate, and an efficient scheme. And we implemented the scheme in, uh, in our evolution, uh, in our GRMSD code splits, and performed a number of GRMSD tests, and which showed that the which showed that uh, the Castown uh, uh, robust uh, the Reprimand C2P scheme performs rather well in highly magnetized uh, low density regions. In the near future, we, uh, we plan to provide support for fully tabulated te temperature and composition independent equation of state to use it with reprimand in uh, spirits and perform magnetized uh, binary neutron star merger simulations. And I'll leave you with a few links on the reprimand C2P paper and the code repositories and the online documentation, as well as the paper for its implementation in spirits. With that, I stop here. Thank you very much.